this summer i got to transplant a whole bunch of seedling succulents so i want to show you a few of my favorites and talk a bit about my process for transplanting these are lithops commonly called living stones because well they look like rocks I was going to transplant these ones first, but it would have taken a long time, so I went for this other species of lithops first. Once I get them out of their pot, I just gently pull each individual plant apart, making sure not to lose any stragglers. I like to pull all of them apart first so that I can sort of grade by size when planting them up, but you could also do them one at a time and they'd probably stay moister that way, so that'd be good. I try to find the best size pot for the plant. These had long roots, so I would opt for the taller pot when available. I ended up needing to use the smaller pot for these just because that's what we have more of. It turns out those tall two inch are kind of hard to get your hands on, especially as a small nursery. After transplanting, I water the seedlings in so they don't dry out. There are actually a few different schools of thought on this for succulents, which is something I will be covering more in depth in an upcoming video on transplanting. I will be doing a deep dive to better understand the science behind the various thoughts, and I'm excited to share that with you all. We use pumice combined with a peat-based mix, and we vary the ratio based on our knowledge of how much drainage a given plant tends to need. We went pretty heavy on the pumice for this mix because lithops and cacti both like a well-drained mix. I like to call this the Oreo milkshake. <laughs> a lot of times it's more chocolate than Oreo though. I got to those lithops I didn't do earlier. Transplanting seedlings like this takes a deceptively long time, so I have to make sure I have enough time to get them all done. For teeny tiny seedlings like this, I will plant them in groups, and it's useful to use a skewer to help get them settled in nicely. I'll add a little top dressing to help keep them in place as well. This year we got an August rain, which was really magical. It's really rare for us to have rain in August in coastal California here. I got to transplant some cacti on this morning too, which was just peaceful and wonderful. Seedlings are definitely my favorite thing. These were two Gymnocolysium species. One thing that has become very important to me is labeling plants using tags. I used to think I would remember what things were and when I planted them, but unfortunately, memory tends to fail me, and probably most people too. We write it down along with dates of when seeds were sown or plants were transplanted, which gives us an idea of how long certain crops take to grow. Growing from seed and transplanting baby seedlings is most definitely one of my favorite tasks at the nursery. I think it really stands out to me because you really get to see a lot of growth and change with those plants, from tiny green dots into things that actually resemble plants. I 
also just think tiny things are really, really cute. So there is that too. But to nurture things and to see their growth from your efforts is just one of the best feelings in the world. But yeah. I'm grateful I got to share a bit of my transplanting process with you, and I hope it brought you some joy, as it always does to me, especially for baby, baby seedlings. I'm working on a more in-depth video about transplanting that discusses a bit more of the plant biology that underlies some of my methods. Stay tuned for that if you want to get really nerdy with me. And if you want to see more of why I love Grow Nursery, you can check out this other video. I'll post it in the end credits. Thank you so much for watching and happy planting. See you next time.